I'm Dan Jaffe, the uh, vice president, UT's vice president for research. Um, thinking about today, I, I thought, so, so what's it like to have TAC in my portfolio? I thought it's like waking up in the morning when yesterday you won 70 to 35 and knowing that today you're going to win 70 to 35 again, and it'll happen every other day. And, and it's, it's a really good feeling. It's great to have such an a, a outstanding organization to, as, a, as a partner in the portfolio to have a really great group of dedicated people who perform at the highest level all the time. And it's, it's really just been a thrill to be involved. And I'm, I'm glad to be back in this position and have a chance to do that. Um, the, what we have today is the product of 20 years of very hard work and building and great thought and strategic leadership by a, a, a lot of people. And it's something we, we really uh, appreciate. And, and it's been happening at a, at a sort of level above and beyond the, the great growth that we've seen in computing more generally. But computational computation plays a role in a lot of different ways, um, both through computational modeling, uh, taking, taking underlying physics and, and, and uh, mathematical expression of that and, and, and building models to doing analysis of data um, to extract information from it to now using artificial intelligence techniques to extract uh, signals from, from, from data and also from models in, in new and exciting ways. Um, this innovation has been the result of a, of a combination of computational horsepower uh, which the high performance computing that we have here uh, exemplifies improved algorithms and, and then improved coding aids that allow people to, uh, to build the kind of analysis tools that we need. So this has been a, a, a multifaceted effort across all things. And it's really expanded the world of problems we can solve uh, and, and explore. In astronomy, my own field, um, it's been revolutionary to have high performance computing. And we see this um, in the modeling space, looking at um, large scale structure of the universe with, with models based on fundamental physics and, and studying the, the evolution of structure from the very smooth universe that appeared right after the Big Bang to the compl complex world of galaxies and galaxy clusters and superclusters that we have today through the detection of, of planets and other so in, in, around other stars, which are now in the thousands and involve an enormous amount of, of data horsepower, and then also uh, sophisticated modeling techniques to understand the nature of these planets. To monster surveys like our own uh, Hobby Everly Telescope Dark Energy Survey, which is in which tax a partner, which is looking at the 70% the of the universe made up of, of the mysterious force known as dark energy, uh, which we're still trying to un, uh, pick apart and, and understand. Um, and we expect to be involved in a new revolution in astronomy in the next few years uh, with the, the work with the Rubin Telescope, the large, the, the large Synoptic Survey Telescope, which will open up the time domain universe in a, in a great way, looking at things that go boom in the night on an enormous scale. So this is gonna involve even more computational power and more analysis. Um, PAC has been involved as a, as a partner, not just for astronomical research, but for all types of research in areas like uh, protein folding and flood prediction, looking at fluid flow in the heart, designing new materials, and understanding black holes. So, so from the practical to the completely esoteric. Um, TAC is metal. It's all of these machines that we just got to see, which are super impressive. But it's also people, many of, many of whom are here with us in the room today. And, and these people are the secret sauce of the, of, of the effort. They're the technicians, programmers, engineering, engineers, scientists, educators, and industry partners that actually make this whole organization hum and are bringing us an even more exciting future as we look to the, to the next scale of machines that, that we'll see over the next few years. So it's, it's a great pleasure to start the, off this celebration of, of TAC and uh, to, to have a chance to really recognize all of you and, and the accomplishments of this organization over the last years. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, my former boss, now known as my boss's boss, the 30th president of the University of Texas, Jay Hartzell. Thanks a lot, Dan. It's a, a pleasure to be here today and for lots of reasons. 
Uh, one is just learning about this incredible asset uh, to campus and to society. Another part is to be around some people again uh, that I hadn't seen. I hadn't seen Michael Dell uh, yet in person since I became president. And uh, it's really just been a learning opportunity for me and the one that uh, I take a lot of pride in as part of the University of Texas. Uh, thanks to Dan uh, for all you do. We had a great year working together where he was our, uh, the interim uh, provost. And uh, I know he's smiling a lot more as he returned back to his role as VP of research. Uh, but I'm really grateful, Dan, for all you do and continue to do for the university. Uh, it's my first time to be out here. I've heard about TAC and know uh, colleagues that have utilized TAC, and, uh, but it's really been fun to see uh, firsthand. And just last week, I was inaugurated as the 30th president, and they waited about a year. I don't know if they were trying to see if I would stick uh, or if it was just uh, COVID and convenience. But uh, as part of that, I delivered uh, an address, and we've been talking a lot uh, as a leadership team, including Dan and our provost, uh, Sharon Wood, who's here today. Uh, but talking about where the university is heading and what do we want to do and what do we want to accomplish as a university. And the word that emerged from these conversations and the, the really the focus of the, the talk I gave last week was the word impact. And that, in, that word is part of how we're really trying to continue to frame what we want uh, UT to be. And our goal is to set up UT to be the most impactful public university in the world. And that means research that is going to go out and, and change the world. It means uh, teaching students the right way. It means finding the world's great challenges and finding out ways that we can uh, help solve uh, the very hardest problems. And how are we going to do that? And it echoes many of the themes that, that Dan hit on, but it's the people. It's taking advantage of where we are in this place in Austin, Texas. And then it's trying to pursue the right thing, the pursuits that we have. Um, and TAC has a big role in that. TAC, we think of, uh, to me, is very central to this idea of having a great impact. Uh, we've invested in TAC, and uh, I, I'm a finance professor by training, and I'm happy to say that TAC has a great return on investment. Um, and so we're really uh, pleased with that impact as well. Um, and you think and start off with people, TAC is a great magnet for talent. Um, it's a magnet to bring talent around the university to the university. I saw some high school students have logged on today that you should all come to UT, um, um, at least apply. We hope you'll think of us. Uh, but TAC is one of these reasons why uh, really smart, energetic, talented people are, are drawn to the university. It's also a, a way to partner with great people. So there's a, the STAR program. Through that program, for example, uh, TAC helps us collaborate uh, with a host of industry partners like Dell, uh, Facebook, Exxon, and the like. It also plays a role in making Austin and Texas what, what we are. Um, Austin has become this global leader in supercomputing thanks to TAC. And you think about the journey we've been on and the latest in 2019, the, the Frontera supercomputer really cemented our role at the, at the forefront. Uh, furthermore, that's sort of the place, if you will. Furthermore, what do we pursue? And you think about what are we going to try to engage in as a university and society? And you think about, for example, in September 2015, so scientists for the first time detected gravitational waves, uh, ripples in the fabric of space time that were hypothesized by Einstein a century earlier. Um, and to make that Nobel Prize winning discovery, uh, the laser infrarometer uh, gravitational wave observatory used tax uh, stampede supercomputer. Uh, TAC has also aided the growth of UT's Odin Institute, which has uh, grown to be one of the greatest applied math centers in the world. Uh, and TAC serves the state in many ways. We were in the visualization laboratory a while ago looking at things that they do around uh, disaster modeling and, and things that really one can't look at uh, in a spreadsheet the same way. And they enable us to look at problems visually and, and solve them more effectively. So really TAC helps harness and leverage the incredible depth and breadth of the, of the 40 acres intellectual horsepower. And it does ways to enhance our research and partner with our industry and all for the benefit of, of serving society. Uh, the future I think is incredibly bright. And I think nobody would look at the world around us and think that the role of supercomputing is gonna do anything other than grow and be enhanced over time. Um, our plan as a university is to make some big bets, uh, to take some big swings, to try to have great impact. And if you think about uh, where we're heading, it's, it's going to be the case that investing in technology and computing and these kinds of things is going to be one of those big bets for the university. Texas has always been a frontier state. I like that mental uh, way of thinking about where we are. And now in today's world, that frontier has turned into things like AI and machine learning and the next generation of wave of super, supercomputers. And it's important for us to continue to position UT at that forefront on that frontier. Uh, so we're all looking forward to the continued growth and leadership of TAC and seeing what the future will hold as we were able to have more of a data-enabled society and research uh, to tackle the hard problems that we all face. And you think about 
what we've been tackling over the last 20 years of TAC. And I just, I, I'm not gonna be the one to make predictions, but I, I can expect that what the next 20 years hold is something we're not uh, expecting today um, and probably don't have our minds around just yet. Uh, before I close, I'd like to thank some, some people, back to the people part again. Uh, the first is our host and very talented director of TAC, Dan Tanzioni. Dan, thanks for doing what you do. Uh, we're really pleased that you're here. Um, I understood uh, most of the words you said to me today, uh, which, which shows one of the gifts you have as a communicator, but it's also been clear to us that you have a gift as a leader. Um, we're really happy to have you part of this, this key part of the campus. I also wanna thank uh, Margaret Martinosi, who I know is, is speaking after uh, Michael today. Uh, she's here with the National Science Foundation and that relationship and that partnership is just so critical to making all this happen. Uh, so thank you to Margaret and thanks uh, for, to the NSF uh, for leading the way for science and for society and for the United States. Uh, there have been many people who have been instrumental in the development of computational science at Texas, uh, but I want to thank a couple of visionaries in particular. Uh, one is Peter O'Donnell. So uh, although Peter couldn't be here today, I want to thank Peter for helping put UT on the map in, in many ways, and we're just really grateful for him. Uh, the second is our, our next speaker, uh, Michael Dell. And it's really hard to think about uh, what to say that's new and fresh uh, about Michael. I'll say it's nice to be with you in person. Um, uh, also, if you think about how we celebrate what the university can do and that the Michael Dell story and the story of Dell computing and the story of Austin, Texas are so interwoven uh, that I think it's really fitting to have one of our great friends and partners here uh, to, to celebrate with us today. Um, and you look at what we're doing with Michael and with Dell Computer, uh, I know more is on the way, and, and Dan highlighted where we are heading as a, as a team together. So watch this space, watch our relationship. I, I know you're going to see great, more great work uh, between UT and Dell um, as we head forward. Uh, with that, let me uh, get out of the way and welcome to the microphone one of the great distinguished alumnus of the University of Texas at Austin and one of the most visionary friends our university or our city have ever had, Michael Dell. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, President Hartzell. And Dan, uh, it's great for, to be here today. Thanks for including me in this celebration. You know, it's an honor for me to represent our company uh, and our team. Uh, this is our hometown and we're excited about all that you're doing here. And it kind of marks a, a, a nice milestone uh, here at UT. It's really amazing to see how much TAC has continued to evolve uh, just since the last time I was here. I remember when we started our journey uh, with TAC with, with Lone Star 2 back in 2003. And together we've increased the performance nearly 6,400 times since then. Uh, and Frontera is now one of the top 10 high performance computing systems in the world, all in the name of enabling open science research. And um, as President Hartzell talked about impact, if you think about all the unsolved challenges in the world, in climate, in the environment, in energy, in biology, and any field, uh, ultimately these are computational pro problems. And as we have more computational power, we're gonna unlock the uh, secrets of the universe and it's exciting. So uh, it's also exciting to see that you're being elevated to leadership class computing facility, a congressionally funded federal high performance computing facility. And it speaks volume to the importance of your work and the great vision that the team here has displayed. And uh, on behalf of Dell, I just wanna thank you for the, the partnership and uh, your confidence in us. Um, and, you know, as President Hartzell also said, you know, the last 20 years have been incredibly exciting, but I think it's all just a pregame show to what's about to come. And those, compounding improvements in computational power are just going to continue. So it's exciting to see our partnership uh, advance even further and help create a future that is healthier and safer and more equitable for all. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Margaret Martinassi from the National Science Foundation. And uh, Margaret, uh, over to you. Uh, thank you all. My name is Margaret Martinosi, and I lead the Computer and Information Science and Engineering or SIZE Directorate here at the U.S. National Science Foundation. Um, NSF was funded over 70 years ago with the mission to promote the progress of science, advance national health, prosperity and welfare, and secure the national defense. And when you look at those words, um, you can trace them to the scientific discoveries and discoverers 
that have shaped the world we live in today and that trace back to NSF funding. Uh, so that includes the first imaging of a black hole, the founding of Google, it includes supporting many Nobel Prize winners, and it includes funding many student career pathways that will produce the next generation of American scientists. Um, today, what we all know, especially in an event like this, is that advances in science are inextricably intertwined with the availability of the right computing resources. And one key aspect of the NSF mission is to help the community ensure that the right computing resources are developed and then coupled into key areas of scientific need and opportunity. Uh, NSF's Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure, led by Dr. Manish Parshar, does an amazing job uh, with the programs and investments that take that mission and make it real. And then likewise, TAC has been an outstanding partner in advancing this mission, obviously through the leadership class computing resources that you develop and operate, and also through this broader constellation of resources and programs. Um, we at NSF have been really proud over the past year, uh, more than a year now, of TAC's role in the COVID-19 HBC Consortium, a public-private partnership of computing resources. And we note that the 2020 recipient of ACM's Gordon Bell Special Prize for High Performance Computing-Based COVID Research went to work that ran on tax systems. And through efforts like that, um, you have directly contributed to improving the world's understanding and management of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, so thank you. Also, likewise, through Frontera's Computational Science Fellowships Program, your efforts also directly contribute to workforce development in these important topic areas as well. Uh, so I just want to, on behalf of NSF, congratulate you on your 20th anniversary, and thanks so much for all you do. And with that, uh, I will happily hand the virtual microphone over to Dan. All right, now I get to look at my own face in this, which is fun. You know, after inviting my boss to come introduce me and things like that, you know, these, these are always wonderful events in that way. So, um, and you know, I've been fortunate that I've uh, gotten to stand up here a bunch at different events where we've uh, announced new grants or opened new buildings or built exciting new systems and cut the ribbon on them um, and celebrated other milestones in the, in the history of the center. And at each of these milestones, I try to sort of distill down all the efforts we have and all the reasons that we do them. Um, and as the, the center has grown and our users have done such a, a stunning breadth of accomplishments, it's gotten harder and harder to do. So um, today I'm not going to talk through that. I'm just going to talk about, uh, you know, our beginnings and then what I think the five key things are that uh, got us to where we are today. Um, so we were founded back in 2001 and our premise back then is what our premise is now, that if we could, uh, you know, provide not only high performance computing resources, but the ability to use them well, that we could power discoveries that would change the world. Um, and, you know, we still believe that's true today, uh, even though the ways that we do that have changed an awful lot in that time. So, um, and as I said, I think there's sort of five keys to what's made us so successful. And one, of course, is the systems, which is the thing we're known the most for, um, you know, around the country and around the world. Uh, it's sort of the engine at the heart of everything we do is having these big computers here. Uh, that are designed to tackle the biggest challenges. And our first system that, uh, you know, before we put in that first Dell system, Michael said he came in and saw the, the Cray system we had sitting here, that system, which was a, a hand-me-down from another center, was 50 gigaflops. Um, our new system, Frontera, um, our, our new S system, there's more coming, um, is 40 million gigaflops. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not quite a million times faster, but almost there in the 20 years. And, uh, that first system had around 200 processors and our last system had around half a million processors. Um, we're looking at system designs on the order of 2 million processors today. Uh, so there, we've seen a lot more growth than just Moore's law would imply. Uh, we've uh, you know, grown far faster than just the rest of the industry has in terms of our ability to deliver computing to science. And They've all been designed not only to be big and fast, but to be reliable and dependable and most of all usable by the research community. And that's the second key, which is the science that we produce. And so um, from, uh, you know, I think our first days, a real key to our success here has been our focus not on how fast we can make systems go, but on how we can get things done with them. Um, we've always been researcher first in what we do. Uh, so in how we design our platforms, how we operate our platforms, how we support our platforms, uh, we've put the user at the center of that. And as a result, we've supported 
tens of thousands of users um, who've run tens of billions of hours of computation here at TAC. And from our fairly humble beginnings, we've supported a whole host of Gordon Bell prizes. Uh, Margaret mentioned the most recent one. Um, we're, you know, three of the finalists for this year's prize are running on the machines right now. Um, I was watching those before I came over. Uh, we've supported Nobel Prize winners. We've helped single students toiling with transient problems late at night. We've helped Nobel Prize laureates and Nobel Prize winners working on billion dollar projects. We've used our systems to understand matter at the nanoscale and we've used it to study the universe at, well, roughly the scale of the universe. Um, Dan, Jeff, you would have to tell us exactly how big that is today. So. Um, so we've processed data and imagery and we've run simulations for pandemics, for hurricanes, for floods, for earthquakes, for wildfires, for chemical spills. Um, and in 2021 so far, in, you know, nine months in, research that used tax systems has been featured on the cover of Science Magazine twice. Um, and a few times the year before related to COVID this year and supercell thunderstorm formation and how water moves in aquifers. Um, and all these science requires really big computers, but that's not all it requires. Um, it requires a few other things as well. And one of those is data. Um, and so you know, people think about us as computing, but we're as much a place about data as we are about computing. And within a few years of our founding, we realized that big computing uh, meant equally that we were going to have big data and all the challenges that come with that. And we not only had to be able to read it and write it fast enough, um, which was the first challenge to keep all those big computers fed, but we needed to preserve it. We needed to curate it. Uh, we needed to make sure researchers could share it broadly um, with their colleagues and with the public at large. And from patient data for personalized cancer treatments uh, to databases of hurricane tracks, to patterns of dry, dragonfly migration, to this year, we moved the archives of the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico, 50 years of astronomy data. Um, to hear attack and scientific to data, data today is as important as scientific publications and an awful lot of that data finds its home here at TAC. So, um, and all of this data uh, has required us to also understand the software and algorithms to do it. So the fourth key is tools. Um, we've been fortunate to be here at UT Austin where we can live in symbiosis with the Odin Institute that uh, President Hartzell mentioned. Um, which brings together some of the finest algorithmic minds in the world to develop the techniques that turn our collections of computers into instruments of insight and discovery. The software and libraries we've built at TAC do everything from managing the complexity of the software stack to automating services to turn instruments at the edge, sending data in into actions on the big machines. And frankly, software and tools has been the, by far the fastest growing part of TAC over the last seven or eight years. And all of this data that we have and the tools to use it has opened up the potential to use AI in new ways. One of, the, one of the reasons we can make AI, and we've seen it explode recently, is we have enough data to train AI that's cheaply available. Um, and these AI techniques are getting incorporated into both the scientific workflow and into many other problems that uh, more broadly apply to society. And so from tools to do synthetic bio biology to coordinating skies full of unmanned drones, to reducing the search space, to finding drugs to fight COVID. Um, the tools of AI are poised to make our advanced computing even more integral to discovery and competitiveness. Um, and then finally, and the most important thing, as D Dan Jaffe mentioned, and oh, I think every speaker has mentioned, is the people. So the people of TAC, the people who use TAC, the people who collaborate with TAC, uh, who fund and promote TAC, and, and who are uh, supply us with the machines that we, that we use. So, it's the amazing people who build the tools, who create the algorithms, who analyze the data, who do the science and build the systems. And the success of TAC has always been foremost about gathering a set of extraordinary people with the brilliance, passion, and drive to tackle this mission. So through the last 20 years, we have had, and we still have, a truly phenomenal staff here. And it's been an incredible privilege to work among so many of you. And for the last uh, seven years to lead you, the nearly 200 of you who are still here and the very few who made their contributions and moved on to other things. Um, we've had incredible support from the people at UT Austin and at UT System, both from the leadership um, to allow us to grow at the rate we've had and, and give us the facilities that we need um, and the incredible research community, our faculty here who partner with us and um, have, uh, helped us grow and make all this possible. We've had steadfast support from one of UT's biggest benefactors, Peter O'Donnell and his foundation. And especially in our critical formative years, um, we couldn't have gotten here without 
Peter's help. Uh, we've had some phenomenal support from vendors through the years to help us achieve all the things that we have. Um, there have been many, many people at many, many companies, you know, in the old days, Sun Microsystems and IBM, but we've done more systems and achieved more with two of our partners through these two decades of TAC than with any other partners. And that's Intel and our hometown system provider here, Dell Technologies. And these companies and their people, they've believed in us and they believe that in partnering with us, we could achieve things together that we couldn't do on our own. Um, and that partnership has paid off and it's been uh, remarkable to see. And we've been fortunate, very fortunate to have had the support and trust of the National Science Foundation who has believed in us enough to choose to fund so many of our large proposals and uh, competitive environments to make our dreams of world leading impact here into a reality. So. Uh, to all of you, those who were here at the beginning, those who joined along the way, um, all those who are here now, my very deepest thanks for all of this. And we aren't done yet. So the NSF funded, um, now in planning, awaiting progressional approvals as we still move through many rounds of approval on this, but the leadership class computing facility is the next inflection point for us and our growth as we move forward to build machines even bigger than our current machine and tackle even bigger challenges in climate and energy and materials and so many of the challenge that will, that will face us all in the decades ahead. So we have great things that we can and will do in the years to come and here's to the next 20 years. And with that, thank you very much. Thanks to everybody and thanks all of you who are here.